Oh my god, a weapon. Uh, look, I have some GTFO training, but I've never been in a real fight before. Hello everybody, uh, I am here with Daniel Bloodworth and we're here to talk Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Uh, I got to play through an area, I got to play as two different classes, uh, and Blood, who has played a lot of Borderlands like myself, I thought he would be the perfect person to sit down with um, and have a chat. And I think, Blood, what's nice about my experience is I can pretty cleanly split this video into between things I really liked and then things I did not like so much. Um, okay. I think the first thing that I kind of want to bring up is I had a good time. I, I had a legitimately good time, and it was a nice reminder of, like, oh, yeah, the Borderlands formula, A, still works really well, and mm -hmm. B, there really isn't a lot of competition for what it is doing exactly. Like, obviously, there that's, are other... That's how I felt about 3. Yeah. Like, that was really one of my big takeaways. It's like, man, Borderlands is just doing kind of its same thing, but it's like there's nobody doing what Borderlands is doing, so that's not too bad if they actually are improving it, which they did a lot. Yeah, and to expand upon what I mean by that, and I'm sure you would agree, is, is like I said, there are other looter shooters out there, uh, and other obviously very loot-driven games, like that's that's a popular thing for games to do, but the way the, the craziness of the guns, and then how your build works together, right, how your special ability works with your passives, which works with your gun, which fires different than any other gun that you've used. Like, it is a very distinct um, thing. And so I think, to start off talking about Wonderland specifically, it, I hate to be re so reductive about this, but it is, it is absolutely true, and I can't think of a better way to describe it. If you like Borderlands, this is more of that, right? <laughs> right. I, I think um, maybe with the fantasy setting, uh, maybe under the guise of Tiny Tina, you know, role-playing a and d session, that you might be like, oh, like, how different is it? Not that different, really. Uh, it is, it is, for all intents and purposes, um, more Borderlands. How much of that pops in from just during normal gameplay? Because I remember in the, you know, the original Borderlands 2 DLC when they did this, that was part of the fun is you would start hearing like her arguing with Roland or something like that or right. you know things going on you know in the real world quote unquote right um, not that often I was actually expecting it more um, it certainly happens with with some regularity but it's not like a constant thing uh, a lot of the dialogue is handled in universe uh, with what like whatever characters are around whatever quest you're undergoing. Um, and then occasionally they'll pop in uh, with some jokes. And again, this is just like a small vertical slice that I got to play, right? So it was one area, it was two story quests, two side quests, and then like collectibles and things that you could find. Um, so I can't say with absolute certainty that this will carry on across the entire game, but in my experience, um, it was the the... The sort of fourth wall breaking was lighter than I expected. Something that I thought was very cute and very appropriate is there are these 20-sided uh, dies, these D20s, out in the world. And if you find them, it will roll the die. And it didn't say this explicitly, but I think the higher the number you get, the better loot that you get. And mm. it's like, okay, that's, that's perfect for um, what you're trying to do here. And then there was another thing that I, I found that seems to be like its own storyline. There's this character who has lost their memories. They've lost their marbles. And so you have to find their marbles um, and then you'll get a little snippet of the story. And I only found one of them. Uh, but it was kind of cool because I saw it above me and it wasn't immediately obvious how I got there. And so I had to like find a path, climb up, fall down, and then jump across. And so that little... Um, platforming puzzle was super fun and like the 20 sided die that I mentioned earlier they're they're extremely bright they're like these bright yellow orangish things and so like you can definitely see them off in the distance and kind of have that mm. moment where it's like okay. oh I want to go after that or or whatever um, with the fantasy setting like what are the weapon varieties like because we're, you know we are you saying like pistols and shotguns and snipers and assault rifles and grenades right and now like I obviously, like, some of that will be just kind of replaced by having, I, I would guess, like, a crossbow or, like, a 
wizard's wand or something, but how does that all, like, Ki- with melee weapons and stuff? Kind of. Um, and so this is where I think it gets into the... This is definitely a more Borderlands, because the first that class that I played, the Greyborn, they had, like, this crossbow thing that you didn't have to reload, but it just felt like an assault rifle. And like the weapon manufacturers are back. And so I was definitely using submachine guns, you know, shotguns, uh, very typical Borderlands uh, weapons that really did not feel like specifically like hyper fantasy focused, right? Mm. And you'll get melee weapons that are like swords or axes or whatever, but they don't feel that different from uh, the melee that you would do in Borderlands. What I would say, the biggest change is instead of having grenades, you that equipable spot is where you put spells. And okay. those definitely lean into the fantasy aspect. So you'll be firing fireballs, uh, like little little fire bolts, really. And then there was one that I loved that my Stabomancer had, where it was just like this giant meteor that would crash down on people. Or you would have lightning uh, in an AoE around your character. Um, and so I think with that specifically, the fantasy element came in a little bit more. And then when you level up, you essentially have D&D stats, right? Like you have strength and dexterity and... And, and so on and so forth. And you can put a point into any of those, just like you would, uh, you know, a tabletop RPG. Um, and, like, dexterity increases your critical chance, and then strength um, increases critical damage, and, and so on and so forth. So they, like, make it work within the, the context of shooting guns. But beyond that, yeah, it, it, was, just, it was just a really good time. Uh, and kind of going back into, like, what makes Borderlands fun... The first class that I played was a Graveborn, and it it was, like, an interesting class, but I didn't click with me, and things were not going as smoothly as I wanted them to be. Because, hmm. um, you so what, what is neat is you have two different, like, class abilities that you can switch between to kind of get a feel for the character. Um, and then one of them was this, like, AoE where you sacrifice some of your health to do damage. Um, And if I remember correctly, and I may not be, I think you do, like, additional damage after activating it. And then there was another one where her her second class ability was you completely restored your life, right? So it could get you out in a pinch. But after you restored your life, your life would tick down, like, really, really, really fast. And then once it was gone... You would restore some of that life, but you would be invulnerable for a period of time. And so it was just like kind of out of the box, like that second one in particular was this kind of out of the box skill that I thought was pretty creative. And it was something where it was like, you know, in this preview session, I'm not having this gel in a way that is quite working for me, but I wonder, right, if you build your character in yeah. a specific way, right, like you really focus on um, lifesteal, and if you really min-max your passives, like I wonder what the potential of this character could be. And like, Yeah, because yeah. if it's like past previews that I've done for Borderlands, like it can be a little hard to just jump in and like, here's 30 skill points, and you're just like plugging things into the tree without really knowing how you know, any of that stuff works. So you're not really right. building in a way that makes sense to you because you haven't had time to like try these things out and then like, okay, now I know what I want to do with the next skill point and all that. Cause you just like jam it all in there at once. Was it kind of like that again? Um, so they kind of took two different approaches with the first class, uh, the Graveborn, it was, they had already leveled them up and then like you would get levels throughout the preview, but like they kind of already had a kit established for them. The Stabomancer, okay. Uh, I completely allocated my own skill points. Um, and that could be part of the reason why I gelled with the Stabomancer a lot more. I Got think it, yeah. I think it was, A, just a, a more straightforward class. Um, and I, I talk about this on stream sometimes. I like big numbers. I like big damage. And, like, the Stabomancer was all about that. Uh, because their first ability was... Both abilities were strong, but the first ability, you shoot out this, like, giant spinning sword that spins in a circle, and it will really just shred through things. 
and it lasts for a period of time, and you can resummon it to different spots. So, like, if your target moves or whatever you want it, you killed your target, so you want to move it somewhere else. You can do that, and then it will make the dura duration like go down a little bit. Um, but it would just chew through, you know, beefier targets uh, really effectively. And then the other one uh, is kind of like a Borderlands staple, I feel like, but you would turn invisible, right? So great for getting out of jail free cards, basically. But then every hit that you did would be a critical hit, regardless of where you hit them, at reduced mm. damage. Um, and so I was just specking with, like, do a ton of critical damage. And I felt like I was just... Things that were more challenging for me before, I was breezing through as a stabbing master. And I, I love that feeling, right, where just between these two classes, I had a moment where I was like, okay, this is working for me. I like this. This feels like my build, right? And you have some sort of ownership over it. Things that I did not like, I feel like I'm less hostile to Borderlands humor as some of the allies, but I have to say, you know, really trying to pay attention and really trying to give the dialogue a chance, it just was never sincerely funny. Like, there would be things that would happen or a joke that a character would make, and, and like, you think about it and you kind of, like, tilt your head and you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of cute, but there was nothing where I was like, oh, wow, like, that was so clever, that was so funny, um, that really got me. Or, or even, you know, as somebody who's played a ton of D&D, &D, where I'm like, oh, man, like, that was a really good D&D &D joke. Like, that moment just didn't happen uh, mm. in, in kind of a, a disappointing way. Um, everything Would you say that forced. it feels like, compared to, like, Borderlands 3, like, did you enjoy that more than this? Or do you feel like it's a step up or about the same? Or step down or about the same. Hmm. Because I do, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm not, like, exactly going to go to bat for Borderlands or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy, you know, a lot of the, the humor and dialogue that they tend to throw in there. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's hard to make that comparison specifically. Like, there was nothing that I saw where I was like, oh, that's actively bad or, or I, or I hate that or anything that was, right. like, upsetting. But there was also never anything where, um, I found it humorous or even like, oh, I'm really attached to this character and I want to see what's going to happen. I do think that that admittedly is much harder to do in a vertical slice like this, but yeah. I would definitely say, you know, based on my preview experience, I was pretty much exclusively playing uh, for the gameplay. Um, and I think the other negative thing, which is not really a negative, but just kind of a matter of fact, is, you know, I, I imagine that when reviews come out for this thing, kind of circling back around to the beginning of the discussion, people are just going to say it's it's more Borderlands, and that is absolutely correct. Um, and whether that is a good thing for you or a bad thing for you, um, your mileage may vary. But just to kind of reemphasize the point, um, the way that they do the gameplay, the way that they do the character building, and the way that they mix shooting with RPG mechanics, I still think that that is something that Gearbox does really, really, really well. I think it's something they did really well in Borderlands 3, and so I, I think, for me, that will carry the game in a good way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about all I have to say uh, about the preview. Did you have any other questions? Yeah, I guess just in terms of, like, you know, whether you saw anything that looked like, like, in terms of, like, towns or characters or animation or anything that stood out to you as kind of being improvements or not or if it's still kind of it all sort of feels like it's they just built more content on the same borderlands 3 stuff it definitely feels like more content on kind of the borderlands 3 style but i think something that borderlands 3 did really well and i, I think that's emphasized here is i think they've really done a great job of kind of modernizing the classic Borderlands style in a way that looks really, really good. Um, what's fun about Wonderland is it's a very extremely colorful world, and, and those colors are super saturated, right? And so when you encounter a goblin, you know, it's not just like some muted generic green. It's like this really deep green like everything just kind of really pops you know and you'll be mm. fighting enemies these like neon enemies and so there's just uh, a ton of 
color and a ton of um, effects. And I think it really fits the the super lighthearted nature of the game where like this is something that you can just sit down with your friends and, and have a good time. And I think the look of the the world really facilitates that atmosphere in a good way. And so that's the question. So it's not it's not really something I think is is unique to Wonderlands over Borderlands three, but I think it's a, a continuation of of that good stuff. Yeah, not so much endless deserts, right? Yeah, not endless deserts, um, for sure. Uh, it, I would actually say, thinking about it, you know, in the area that I was in, I think it was called Mount Craw. It was a, you know, it was a, it was a borderland size area, so it was fairly, uh, fairly large. But I would say, even within that, uh, there was a good amount of variety, right? Where like you would have kind of these these like little quaint villages that you would go through and fight and then you'd have like an ice cavern and then you would have like a lava cavern and so not things that are super unique when it comes to video games but i definitely felt like just going from one section to the next um there was a a good bit of variety and something else that i want to highlight the final boss that i did um, the actual fight itself wasn't that amazing. It was shooting weak points on a stationary, like, robotic neck. But what was really cool is, in the background, there were all of these goblins watching a fight. And so, oh, okay. like, you, nice. really, you really felt like you were kind of in this arena, and, like, you just had this huge audience in front of you. And it was, it was definitely a moment where it, it felt like the spectacle went up a notch. Uh, which is exactly what you want to see in a boss fight. So yeah, with a big area, did you have any kind of like vehicles or mounts that were in this uh, section? I did not. I don't know if they have announced vehicles, but you know, obviously that's something that's super central to Borderlands. But no, I did not have um, any vehicles. I guess just as I should say, I started around level eight or nine, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it was still fairly early, but yeah, I did not have access to to a vehicle. I don't know if it's going to be more guided and you won't have that opportunity i don't know cool well thank you so much blood uh i hope you enjoyed this conversation we'll have more coverage for wonderlands next month yeah thanks for checking it out